Hi, this is Miss Sebastian, and we're going to look at roots as solutions to equations in cube roots, the quiz part one. Rosa, Roberto, Andrea, and Eno found an estimate for 27. So on your quiz, it's asking you to go through and find out what's the best estimate. So we're going to do that by looking to see what numbers the square root is in between. So on this one, it's the square root of 27. So I'm going to have to use my knowledge of perfect squares. And I know that I've got a perfect square of 1. 2 squared is 4. 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, 6 squared is 36, 7 squared is 49. Okay, we can stop there because I see that 27 would fit right here. Okay, it fits between 25 and 36. So I know that the square root of 25 would be 5. The square root of 36 is 6 because that means what times itself can give us that number. So I would say the estimate of the square root of 27 would be between 5 and 6. And the 27 is closer to 25. So I would say it would be closer to 5. Joy knits a square blanket that has an area of 2,400 square inches. Okay, what is the approximate length of each side? So we know that the um, square root would be our answer. Now, instead of just plugging that in our calculator, we want to know the approximate length. So we're going to say, okay, what kind of numbers are perfect squares around 2400? Well, I know this is how I break it down, which is a little different than what the book shows you. Okay. In my head, I break this down to 24 times 100. And I know that 10 is a perfect square. Okay, so I know I can break that one down into 10 times 10. And 24 breaks down into 4 times 6. This is just my brain working. Okay, then I say, okay, I know that 4 is a perfect square of 2. So I'm rewriting everything. And I want to see what I can take the perfect square of out. I've got 2 times 2, so a 2 comes out. And a 10 times 10, so the 10 comes out. Because I've got 2 of those. Now I've got square root of 6. That makes it a little easier for me to look at because I know the square root of 6 is between 4 and 9. Those are two perfect squares. So that would be between 2 and 3. So I've got 10 times 2 on the outside. That's 20. Times either 2 or 3. So 20 times 2 is 20. Sorry is 40, and 20 times 3 is 60. Now, that's a pretty broad category, but it could kind of give me an idea of where this square root is going to be. Now, I could also say 2,400. Well, I know that 5 times 5 is 25, so 50 times 50 is um, 2,500. So, 
on my calculator just to um, make it a little quicker. I can do 49 times 49. And that would be 2,401. Ooh, guess what? That's pretty close. 2,400 and 2,401 are really close. So I could say that this is about 49. Okay, it'd be 48 point some odd. And I can always type it in my calculator as 2,400 and take the square root. And it tells me the exact answer is 48.98979. So that is really, really close to 49. But there's just two ways to break it down. I went through this direction first because I kind of wanted you to see what happens. It would be 20 times the square root of 6 because you'll use that later on. An example of an irrational number is blank. That's our question. So the first thing we need to look at is what a rational number is. And a rational number is any number that can be written as a fraction. So it could be 5 over 33 or 1 over 2 or 9 over 1. Those are rational numbers. Now an irrational number is any number that cannot be put into a fraction. A lot of times you see those with square roots of any number that's not a perfect square. Remember your perfect squared are numbers like 4, 9, 16, 25, 36. So if we think of a number that's not one of those, it could be any. It could be 27. It could be 29. It could be 131. Any of those work as long as it is not a perfect square. Those are examples of irrational numbers. Another one that is extremely um, famous is one we'll use when working with circles. It's pi. Pi is an irrational number. Which statement is true? Every no real number is an integer. Well, an integer is positive or negative whole numbers. Hmm. Well, a real number could be a fraction. That's not a whole number. So that can't be it. Every rational number is a real number. Okay. Every rational number is a perfect square. So that would mean the only rational numbers would be 4, 9, 16, 25, dot, dot, dot. No, that one's not true. Every integer is an irrational number. Well, the definition of integer is that they are a rational number. So that can't be it. So that leaves you with this. Every rational number is a real number. If you think back to the picture that you saw, it has real numbers and then all the smaller parts of those. And rational is a category of a real number. Two square roots are used to, oh, sorry, which two square roots are used to estimate square root of 34? So I go back to my perfect squares. I've got square root of 4, square root of 9, square root of 16, square root of 25, square root of 36, square root of 49. I could keep going, but I do see that 34 is between 25 and 36. So the two square roots are square root of 25 and square root of 36. The square root of 25 
is what times itself gives me 25, that's 5. And the square root of 36 is 6. So the two square roots are either square root of 25 and square root of 36, or 5 and 6. An estimate for negative square root of 89 is the square root of 89. So first we need to figure out what two square roots this is between for perfect squares. So I don't think 49 is going to do it, but I know that 9 times 9 is 81. So I could do square root of 81, square root of 89, and then 10 times 10 is 100. So I can put 89 in between those two. We know that this negative is outside the square root, so we know that's going to be in our answer. But we don't have to do any more than that with it. Okay, so I do see that it's between 9 and 10. So it's going to be negative 9 point something. And it's only 8 away from the square root of 81, but it's 11 away from the square root of 100. So it's almost in the middle there. So I would say that it's pretty close to the middle, so I could estimate it to be about 0.5. If it was, let's say it was the square root of 82, Okay, that we were looking for, that one is really close to this one. So maybe I do it negative 9.1 there. So we really want to look at where it's close to and kind of um, base our estimation on those. Mason is an architect and is drawing the plans for a room addition for a client. If the shape of the room is a cube, what is the volume in cubic feet if the length is 29? So a cube means that it is a perfect cube. All length, width, and height are the same. So we're going to take the 29 and cube it. What that means is 29 times 29 times 29. This exponent is a 3, so I multiply 29 where I multiplied the base right here three times, whatever that exponent set. So you can use your calculator to multiply 29 times 29 times 29. And you would get 24,389. And since this is feet, the area of a circle is found with the formula a equals pi r squared. The expression is pi times r squared, where the symbol pi represents 3.14. If the tile artist is placing tiles in a circular mosaic pattern, and the area of the circle is 725 square feet, what is the approximate radius of the circle? Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is write out our equation. A equals pi r squared. So then we're going to put in the area. Well, it told us the area of the circle is 725. So that goes into the area there, equals pi, it told us was 3.14, and we don't know the radius, so I'm going to leave that r squared. So now, I've got to get the r by itself. So the 3.14, or pi, is being multiplied by the r squared. So to undo that, I've got to do the opposite, or the inverse, of multiplication. The inverse of multiplication is division. So I'm going to divide by 3.14. So 
So since I did it to the right side of the equation, I also have to do it to the left. I'm just left with r squared because 3.14 divided by 3.14 just leaves us with 1. And I'm going to type. What do you do to check whether a number is rational or irrational? Okay. Rational and irrational, the difference between those two is that 1 can be put into a fraction form. So got to remember fraction form and use an example of an irrational and a rational number. So an irrational number we already talked about is one of those squares that is not a perfect square. So I could say um, square root of 22. A rational number is one that can be put into fraction form. It could be one half. It could be 64, 64 over one. It could be uh, 347 over a million. But what you need to say there, and I'm not going to write it out for you because writing on the screen in pretty long uh, forms is a little difficult. But what I want you to make sure you include when you're telling me the difference between a rational or irrational number is that they have to be able to be put into fraction form. Okay, and how does finding the square root of a number compare to finding the cube root of a number? Okay, let's think about that. The square root of a number, we have to, let's see, square root of 25. Well, the square root of 25, I know, is 5 because that means it's two factors together. The square root of 27 would be the um, we couldn't find the square root because it's not two numbers put together. But if we were looking for the cube root, cube root, that means three factors together to make 27. And the cube root of 27 is 3 times 3 times 3. That's three factors multiplied together to give us 27. So in your answer, you're going to show me how the square root of 64 is different from the cube root of 64 because it does want you to use the number 64 in your explanation. So tell me what multiplies together to get 64. Tell me what multiplies by itself three times to give me 64. When you're telling me the difference between a square root and a cube root.